In today's video, we take a cycling tour of Kyoto, Japan, showing off some of the most beautiful and iconic places and those lesser known. Come along with us. We hope you enjoy the ride. Welcome to another video, guys. When people think of Kyoto and the sort of photography that you would do here, it's usually to go to very, very popular spots like Kinkakuji. But of course, there are many that are lesser known, which are equally, if not more, beautiful. Today, I am joined by Alessandro, who is a local of Kyoto, been here how many years now? Uh, just over 11 years. That's what we are going to explore and show you around today, starting with... So today we're starting at the Philosopher's Path. We're starting on the south side, which starts at Nanzenji, and it's gonna go all the way up north to Ginkakuji, or the Silver Pavilion. And it's a canal that comes all the way from north to south. I'll be trying to take you guys off the main path and try to take you to some of the less seen spots of, uh, of this space. And um, especially there's an area called Annakuji that I'm really excited to share with you. We've done some cool projects there in the past, and I think it'll be a fun thing to check out. So let's go check those out, and uh, we'll go see what it's all about. Right on, cool. let's go. So my philosophy as a photographer is that I want to try to think outside the box and come to these types of places, but not typically during the peak season. I find that you can discover lots of hidden qualities that are interesting in the off season that you wouldn't normally find otherwise. Um, normally here we have the cherry blossoms that are just full and vibrant during the peak season in the spring, but in the lush summer right now, you have all this overgrowth and moss, and I think that that really introduces a, a much different quality that I think a lot of other photographers would get in the same space. And so I always kind of encourage people to uh, try something different in a familiar space because you can always discover new things that are a bit more exciting. It's difficult to find a hill in Kyoto, but on our mission to the next location, we managed to find it, pedaled our way up it, and in short time, we're ready to show you our next location. Sandra was talking about how the Philosopher's Path, beautiful though it may be right now, is especially so in the spring for the cherry blossoms. You'll find that time is a major theme throughout this video. The next place that we've come to now is called Anrakuji, and this would be the place that you're going to go to if you want to get the quintessential beautiful fall shot. To clarify why this is so popular in fall is that all around us here are the iconic Japanese momiji, the little mini maple. When the season turns, figuratively speaking, Anrakuji is on fire. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, during the autumn season, the gradation from yellows to oranges to reds, this is the place for local photographers, not so much uh, with as much of an international focus just yet, but we can really tell that a lot of local photographers are here right when the autumn hits, and you can really see the, uh, the evolution of this space into something very different during the autumn season. Well, it's very much a hidden space, but um, we're hoping that it can grow to show kind of the rest of the world what the little hidden spaces in Kyoto are all about and what it can really offer. Now when you got a long day of photography, you've gone to all these lovely spots that Sandro has shown us, there will come a time when you need to take a break. And that is what this is for. This is Demachianagi. This is Demachianagi at the Kamogawa Delta. So it's right where the river splits at the north side of the city. And it goes all the way down throughout the city and it's great because the Kamogawa is this beautiful place for everyone to relax at but right at the Delta it's a perfect spot for picnics and families and stuff but if you do have a picnic here you gotta watch out there are hawks that are always you know looking to steal your food and that's been uh, the topic of a few funny incidents for me here but uh, very relaxing we gotta put our feet in and cool down <laughs> and it's, uh, it's a blast definitely when you need to take a break come to the Machianagi Put your feet in, relax, and then you'll be energized to get out there to get those last great shots of the day. Once more as the sun fell, we got on our bikes and headed to the final location that Sandro had thought would be a good place for us to hit up before ending our day. If you guys have ever heard of someone coming to Kyoto for the purpose of taking geisha photography, most prominent would be the Gion district. It's very well known, it's very beautiful, but highly frequented, very, very busy. But tonight we're on the complete opposite side of town at Kamishichiken, which is the oldest Hanamachi or geisha district in all of Kyoto. 
And for that reason, other side of town, it means that it is far less known and far less frequented. That kind of hidden quality means that the whole place is very tranquil, and the aesthetics reflect that in a very subdued way. Um, you'll see that most of these buildings are old, dark wood, machi, or traditional Japanese houses, and they're local businesses that have been here for generations. One of the most iconic uh, images though of Kamishichi Ken is the inverted lanterns that the ones you normally see in Gion. In Gion you have red lanterns with skewered uh, dango or uh, sweet dumplings that it's a red lantern with white dumplings on it but here you have white lanterns with red dumplings and it kind of shows the connection to Gion but in its own little unique way it has its own identity talking about aesthetic probably what you've noticed most obviously is that we have come here at night so the idea being, and this is something we want to get across, this is sort of the moral of the story for us as we made this today, was that it's not necessarily that we're going to a place that's more or less popular all the time. The philosopher's path is pretty well known, but the idea that you could go somewhere and put your own stamp on it by just changing things up a little bit. We went to the philosopher's path when it was summer. We've come here when it's nighttime. It doesn't take much but you can make something entirely original by just shifting the perspective on it by a little bit. I want to thank you guys so much for coming out to enjoy this time with us in the video. It's really cool to explore all around Kyoto like this. There are many more spots. Sandra would show me if we had more time, but perhaps that's for another video. Thank you again for tuning into this one. Let us know in the comments down below which section you enjoyed the most. Where would you shoot your photography? We'll catch you in the next one. That's all for now. Peace.